No, actually born in the UK, uh, Sheffield, uh, back in 1968. And we migrated out to uh, Australia when I was three months old. So, pretty much Australian. Yeah, it's, I, I class Australia as home, even though I do have a, an old British passport sitting in the cupboard at home. Like everything, it always starts as a hobby. Um, yeah, back in the film days and stuff like that, and the hobby becomes a bit more of a serious pastime. Serious pastime starts costing a bit more money. Um, when you start buying the gear, then to that level, it started needing to be, you know, earning money to pay for that equipment. And yeah, things just, you know, roll from there, basically. So. I remember my first front page, which, which was actually paid. Uh, it was for a rally magazine for the uh, Rally Australia. And uh, yeah, that was back in early 2000s, 2004, maybe 2003, I think so. I started with Giddy in 2005. Um, I was working for another agency prior to them, um, shooting a lot of NBL and stuff like that. And then the uh, yeah, opportunity came through with Getty, uh, January, February of 2005. Yeah, um, I think it might have been May, I think roughly around about there, with the, the first, uh, first set of games for the A-League. Um, obviously followed the glory a little bit before then, but it's, um, yeah, so the whole inception of the A-League up until uh, you know, where we are today. Yeah, I didn't, I've only been to a handful of games before then, um, obviously followed you know, what was on the news and their, their success back in the early you know, national days. Um, so it was a good, good opportunity you know, to get into shooting uh, you know, football uh, when we started with Getty. Sometimes some, some of those you know, placements on the, on the field where we can go. Um, I guess I'm fortunate outside of COVID times I can go down the sidelines um, a bit more than the other guys can. I guess some of the issues we have, I guess, are going to win um, guys are shooting goals and you've got uh, you know, players are being obviously obscured by other players and, or depending on what side of the, uh, the sideline you're on, depending on where the assistant referee is running through, they could quite often be running through your shots. So I try to sit up on the opposite side to where the, you know, the ref is, is running. It can be tough. Um, being tall can be an advantage at times to get over packs, you know, to get shots, but at the same time, people think you're tall so you can shoot over them, so they'll cut in front and, you know, start blocking views. Um, TV, we have issues with, as you know, um, we're coming through with steady cams. they're trying to get their shots, the, you know, the director's in the ear of the camera operator. You've got to try and work as a team as you can, but at the same time, we've got to get our shots for the A-League you know, competition, plus for the club, so and obviously for the newspapers, because the newspapers will rely quite heavily on agencies to get their photos. So, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but we, you know, we obviously try to get what we can, how we, how we can. You, you hope you've got it. Um, you always have a quick look and review, and you know, we tag it in camera, and that's ready to go for when we, when, when we start ingesting the images. Um, but there's a lot of times when you know, you'll get players cross through in front of a pass if there's been a great header or something like that, and you've had another player blocking the shot, and, Focus has grabbed them instead of you know, where you should be, but yeah, it happens. Workload has probably increased. Um, I think like uh, what the demands are on game day for more imagery, uh, different requests. When we do uh, the media days, you know, the, the number of images through there have skyrocketed from what we used to do. It used to be just a straight headshot on green screen. Now it's a full day photo shoot, you know, player portraits action shots, um, you know, plus the headshots in various poses. So yeah, it's, work has in, intensified you know, definitely over the years. Pretty much that's basically what we've had to do from day one you know, with, with the A-League is you know, we, we're shooting images before the game starts you know, with warm-ups. Uh, we're trying to get images out within the first five or ten minutes because you know, clubs, um, organisations such as the A-League are chasing imagery for social media, early posts, and then as the game is progressing, we're still shooting and standing at the same time. So, and then that follow obviously follows end of game where we'll do another you know, probably hour, two hours of um, editing and standing. Standard go-to. In the past, I've always run with a, uh, always, always been Canon equipment that I've shot with. Um, Canon, either a Canon 400 uh, 2.8 with a 1DX uh, Mark II or at the moment I've been shooting more mirrorless with the uh, Canon R5 and quite often with a Canon 200 or 400 lens. 
Yeah, I always shoot uh, in manual mode. Um, I guess as far as my settings go, for, for like a night game, for example, you know, I'd be shooting at probably you know, 4,000 ISO, um, 1250, 1600 um, shutter speed. And depending on the lens I'm using, it's probably around about f4 is what I'm aiming for. Um, sometimes if I use the 400, I might bring it down to you know, 3.2, 2.8. Depends what you're chasing. Sometimes the daytime games you can have issues obviously with the, the shadows for the grandstand coming through and stuff like that. Um, but it also lends itself to you can play with shadows and darker backgrounds and, and things like that. So nighttime games with the new cameras we've got now, the light's a lot more even, especially with the lighting at um, HBF Park. But since they did the lighting upgrade, it is fantastic with the new cameras. So personally, I prefer night games. But the day games, like, like I said, can lend themselves to you know, different style of images, more punchier colours and you know, contrasting with the shadows and at play and stuff like that. It's a, it's a tough mission, yeah, Dorian. Yeah, I can't say I'm a huge fan because the light is so patchy there and obviously we have to really dial up the ISO to, uh, you know, to get a decent image out of it. It's always a lot of work. Um, but you also have a great time and a good laugh you know, while we're doing it. Um, I remember going back, I think it might have been the 18, 19 season, I think it was, or the 1920 season, where we're doing some LED coloured lights with the players and trying to get the players on side for the first couple of shots when I had to tip black out of the room, turn the lights off, get them to hold their breath for 10 seconds while I walk around with a light stick. They thought I was crazy until I finally showed them the, you know, the first few images and then they were sold, bought into the idea and bang, off we went, so it was good. Yeah, I think two really come to mind are probably uh, Bobby and uh, Stevie. Um, having seen the guys come through from playing days and then into coaching roles, you know, we, we have a laugh even to the last set of headshots we did last season, you know, especially like with Steve, how many seasons we've shot these guys from playing and their ages and if we stacked up the images side by side to look at the differences as, as, as they have aged over the years. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a better good relationship with those guys. But more recently with the likes of you know, Diego and Bruno, you know, they're lovely to work with. Liam, you know, we did some work with him during uh, the COVID uh, lockdowns last year. Um, fantastic guys. I think so. <clears throat> There's obviously a few guys there that um, have you know sponsorships in place and stuff like that. So they're always pretty keen to get branding in in, in the shots. I know Liam in particular with his you know keepers gloves and and drink drink bottles and that sort of thing. Um, but with the use of you know social media, with their Instagram you know posts that they, they do have, they're they're quite keen and hungry for for imagery. I think for me probably the when they finally beat Adelaide for, you know, for the finals in the 18-19 season and become premiers. You know, to me, I think that was the highlight of what we've shot. And to see all that emotion of the players and you know, Tony and you know, the other owners that were just involved, and it was just like the passion that was there, then to roll through to Optus for the, for the grand final, which I'm, unfortunately you know, never went to plan. Um, but yeah, that, that, that final home and away game to, to you know, take out the premiership, I think was uh, probably the highlight for me. It's difficult, like, <clears throat> probably going back to that game with the final, you know, when um, Diego's holding up the trophy, the, the, the plate, I think that's, uh, I, I like that shot. You know, it, it sums up where the team from that age, that, that group went through and, and you know, finally got the re rewards at the end. But there's, there's a lot of other stuff there where you know, there's been some good you know, challenges for the ball and stuff like that, or celebrations with goals. You love Bruno when he's celebrating, you know, especially when he comes at you, you know, doing his celebrations, that's great. It depends on the, on the season, I guess, and where, where we stand, uh, what month it is. Summertime, for example, we could be shooting the A-League, we could be shooting uh, NBL. If the tennis is on, that, that may be happening at the same time. Um, yeah, and, and tailing off towards the end of, uh, of summer, AFL starts kicking back in as well. So you start getting all these crossover of sports where you could literally go from shooting and cricket in the mix as well on top of that. So you could be shooting cricket one day, A-League the next, um, a basketball game the following night. Or going from one game to the next, which is quite often, you, know, you, do, you will shoot a, um, if it's an early A-League game, 
there may be a later NBL game, so you'll go from one, one, one game to the next and shoot that. I think so. Um, you know, a lot of press guys have come and go, unfortunately, with the redundancies you know, in, the, uh, in the paper industry. Um, but a lot of us still do keep in touch. Um, but the guys that shoot game day, I think we're all you know, fairly close. I mean, we know each other you know, to a degree. Um, there are others that we do obviously float around and shoot other codes as well. So we're a little bit closer, closer knit in that regard. But uh, no, it's good. I think because you only generally get that one shot, it's okay. Yes, you do get to take a burst of images, but unlike you know with with video footage where you can shoot it for how many minutes you want and you can pick the best out of there, and yeah, you might need to do a thirty second grab here. With us, you miss that shot, you've missed it, um, and it captures it. You know, probably a bit more in a still image sometimes than what it can do on, on video. Video can probably show maybe a little bit more emotion. Obviously, you get the audio aspect, but a still image has to be strong to really show you know, the, the peak and the emotion. What's, what's there? <laughs> Funny you say, I actually, I, years ago before I, I took up um, being a photographer, I actually wanted to be a Channel 9 cameraman. So I was looking at getting into that industry years and years before you know, getting into uh, photography. And as it turned out, I sort of went the, the photo route instead. So, <laughs> but yes. nice, nice try. <laughs>